for hundreds of women today. I can see something, but I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me. There's a new way to get pregnant. There we go. There's a present for you. Good luck. Placing the sperm exactly where it needs to be. Unregulated. But not illegal. Straightforward and quick. This is possibly the biggest site. But risky. I've been on this site literally 15 minutes and the first offer of sex has just arrived. Car coming up. A man you've never met will come to your door. This might be him now. Hand over his fresh sperm. That's it. Good luck. And will probably want nothing in return but a baby picture nine months later. This is the sort of thing that makes it all worthwhile. There she is, weighing it at seven pounds, five ounces. For a year, we filmed three online super donors. Oh, crikey. Absolutely billions of them. At the heart of this controversial system, struggling to fill a growing demand for fresh, free sperm, direct to your door. Welcome to my van, or as my wife calls it, the Wanker van. That's a uh, Vauxhall Combi. Pay £615 for it. And the main thing, of course, there's no windows in this van. A veteran online sperm donor, Clive, has driven 30 miles from his home to deliver to a same-sex couple who contacted him on Facebook. Most donors would go to the house and then ask to use the bathroom, but not me. Made it. Give me 20 minutes or so. So do you have to ejaculate in there? <laughs> That'd be a good shot. No, 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 I've got a, a beaker. Lock the doors, pull my curtain down, jump in the back, juice the donation into a cup. The reason I prefer the system is that I'm kept more distant rather than me going into their homes and visiting the bathroom. I don't have to feel so much guilt, perhaps, towards my wife. So far, so good. Yes, it's still there, and the donation is still in there. Why do you have that under your arm? Uh, to keep it warm. It's all very quick. Bang on the door. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing things. Here's your donation. Oh. Normally, I complain about the traffic. Traffic? I, I mean, it's something I've said 48 minutes, and it took two hours. And I'm gone. Being sperm donor is quite an adventure. I'm doing 14 donations on average a month. And I'd travel up to 80 miles away. Tonight, Clive is delivering to a couple who approached him online two weeks ago. There aren't many reputable online donors, so demand for Clive's sperm is high. I don't charge anything at all for my donation. Being a sperm donor is being a Samaritan. Looks like I'm expected. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. still in my arm. I don't know why it's warming up out here. Right, I can say it's only the second donation, isn't it? It's, it's, it's quite early days. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I'll um, hear from you in two weeks then. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> Every minute counts. The sperm must be used while it's fresh. I've been a sperm donor coming up to four years. I read an article in one of the papers about a donor, and I thought it's something that I could do. So I went onto a Facebook site and registered. I would never imagined that I would have been donating to this extent. 
there are hundreds of ladies out there that don't a man, they just want a baby. Do usually meet to show proof of all health checks. Yeah, I have the paperwork for the STI checks. Sometimes I could be two or three hours chatting to a few people. She wants no contact. Uh, is that all right? So what, what she means is that, uh, you know, that once the baby's born, not to expect any updates or anything. While Clive has been introduced to a handful of his donor children, most of them he will never meet. I do expect to be told that the baby has been born at the, at the minimum, and you know, maybe it was a boy or a girl, and, and that for me is closure. Well, already they're looking for a second sibling. Uh, I've, I've got one, uh, she's expecting the second, and she's already warned me that uh, she'll want another two. <laughs> so I'm keen. Clive is 61. Since retiring from teaching, he has spent much of his free time and money on delivering his sperm far and wide. I've had a parcel this morning, and that's what 100 syringes look like. Quite a few, very small, but uh, I'm sure recipients appreciate the small ones. And I have got through quite a few boxes. But I'm getting off the 500 donations in the last four years. Could be to four years in two months. Quite a few. <laughs> This has come out of my own pocket, same as everything else has. On average, a donation is going to cost me £15 in petrol. The reason I do this is, is purely to help people. I see the happiness that it brings, and, and that's, that's enough payment in itself. Around 700 babies a year are born by donor insemination in regulated UK fertility clinics. For roughly £1,200 a cycle, the sperm here is screened for any health conditions and the donor remains anonymous until the child is 18. There are no figures from unregulated online donors. But in the course of making this film, it has become clear that each year, hundreds of babies are born this way. Free Sperm Donors UK. Oh, she's showing a pregnancy stick. Is she pregnant or not? No. Hi there, I'm 28 years old, looking to start my own little family. I live in Paul Dorset. Thanks for reading. Too far for me. Over the years, donors on the Free Sperm Facebook groups have got to know each other. One donor I do chat to on Facebook is called Mark Webb. I've never met him. He's a bit secretive. He's south of me, and that's probably one reason why I don't seem to get a lot of business south of me, because he's mopping that area up. The vast majority of the recipients I deal with are lesbian couples. There are a few single ladies and couples where the husband has been vasectomised. They may only meet me for five minutes ever, and suddenly I'm the father of their baby. I'm not sure what car he's got now. I don't know if it's still the same one or but he's changed it. Soon find out. <laughs> Bernie is planning a second child by Mark. She met him on Facebook two years ago when they conceived Emily. Car coming up. I think this might be him now. Hello? Come on in. Again. Hi Mark, you are okay? Lovely to see you. And you, come on in. Thanks. Right, so you haven't met Emily yet, have you? No, I haven't. I've been doing it now for about five years. I did consider going to a sperm clinic, but I was already too old. When I discovered these Facebook sites existed, I just put my name forward and I was absolutely amazed at the quantity of responses I got. To date, I've got 54 babies born 
with nine ladies currently expecting over the next nine months or so. She's walking now, isn't she? Um, ish. She's just starting Emily, to. Emily, you're lazy. You should be walking. Yeah. <laughs> She's absolutely dolly, isn't she? She is lovely. Can you say your name? Say Emily. After I'd had the children with my wife, I felt underused in a way, and if Des O'Connor could have babies at the age of 73, why couldn't I? I want to reproduce with as many women as possible and pass on the genetic characteristics that I have. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that all my babies have. Yes, she definitely has. Hello. She does this crab crawl where she'll crawl, but she'll drag one leg. Oh, right. Yeah. You're a weirdo, aren't you? OK, we better get on with it. Um, okay. I'll just run over the procedure again, uh, although you probably remember it from yeah. last time. OK. Give me 10 minutes in the bathroom to produce the, the sample for okay. you. Give it five minutes to sort of liquefy and then draw it into the syringe. Find somewhere comfortable to lie down. Yeah. And then just insert the syringe and touch the cervix and then very slowly squeeze the plunger. Leave the syringe in to act like a plug. OK, you can show me where to go. OK. The bathroom is just here. Mm. I'll turn the... There's a plug in. There's a visor thing. I need somewhere to plug in my computer, you know. Um, extension Extension leads, yeah. Yep, That'd give me perfect. one moment. Right, um, where would the nearest plug be? I've got so used to this, I've got it off to a fine art. I've got various tools and tricks I can use in the bathroom to enable me to produce the goods within five minutes, in most cases. So it's quite a long extension needs. Okay. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that'd be ideal. Okay, I shall just shut this door for you. Make sure it's switched on. Um, is it switched on? Yep, yeah, there we go. Thank you. I think my wife would be aghast if she knew what I was doing. I don't see it as cheating, simply because there's no sex involved. I'm not whining and dining these women when spending the household funds on dating them. My wife's firmly convinced that she's got a totally faithful husband, and she has. I've just got this rather unusual sideline. It feels like the longest wait of my life. <laughs> I did look into fertility clinics. It's a lot of money. You could end up spending 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. And then that could have been 8,000 pounds you could have spent on your child. Online sperm donation is more personable. I get to meet Mark. I get to see him, the way he looks, the way he talks. Sugar. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, keep it warm at body temperature and keep okay. it upright. Uh, warm the syringe as well so it's the same temperature as the pot. Okay. And the best to look for this month. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> if we have no success, we can always try again next month. Okay, brilliant. Lovely to meet you all. Okay, see you later. Bye, Bernie. Bye. Bye. Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, the dog. <laughs> Another beautiful car park in a motorway services. Mitch, 34, from Aberdeen, has driven down to Manchester to donate to a same-sex couple who contacted him online. The timing of every donation is critical. It's a little bit frustrating that we've got no control, no say over when the ovulation comes. We just have to hang around and wait. I've had more exciting weeks. Like most prolific super donors, Mitch donates for free. But he asks recipients to help out with travel expenses. 
I've been donating for about five years. I've helped create about 15 families. I've donated in London, Essex, Yorkshire, and as far away as Devon. When I first stumbled across donation sites, I remember thinking, this liquid is so valuable to some people. And, well, I've wasted so much of the stuff in my years. I donate because I want to help people. I mean, this is their hopes and their dreams, and I'm proud of it. It's the best thing I've ever done. So this is just a sterile pot, 60 mil. I'm not gonna fill it though. <laughs> That's all they need, just the, the bottom covering five mil. If I'm gonna do anything, I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. And keeping my fertility as high as possible is a large part of that. I take a pot of supplements a day. It contains pycnogenol, which is French maritime pine bark extract, which is good for sperm count, supposedly. Vitamin B12 in a pretty high dose. I'm taking N-acetyl L-cysteine capsules. Rutin, which is a bioflavonoid. All of the stuff I take is based on peer-reviewed research. 70% have got pregnant in the first cycle. So it's very high success rates. When Mitch takes on a new recipient, he sends them a welcome pack. This is a speculum that's like a, a demo one. So essentially, it's put inside the body and then opened up. It's just doing it essentially what would happen with sexual intercourse, placing the sperm exactly where it needs to be. But ideally, you would almost like whip it up like a 99 cone so that as much of that stuff is in contact with the cervical mucus. I send them a small and a medium and a headlight torch just so that they can physically see the cervix. One of the recipients, she calls her partner her vagina miner when she's got her headlight torch on. I've done a fair bit of acting and modeling and stuff, but I guess I'm not very motivated financially. For me, your main goal in life is to be happy. And this is something that makes me really happy. Janine is 31 and single. She first contacted Mitch a year and a half ago. First time I donated to her, she got pregnant and I was clearly really happy about it. The weeks went by. I'd had an initial midwife's appointment and then over a weekend, watching telly, started to bleed quite heavily. The pregnancy wasn't right. It was just these cancerous cells rather than actually a fetus. Um, and that, you know, that it hadn't worked. When my due date came round, it made me think my life could be so different and I should be looking at my baby right now, but I'm looking at nothing. I've got nothing. Janine has recovered from the failed pregnancy and has travelled up from her home in Leeds to Aberdeen to see Mitch and try again. I think Janine was worried that maybe something was wrong with her and that she might never be able to conceive. There's an urgency to do a donation right now because I got my peak fertility day yesterday. So time's running out. Before the donation, I'll have made sure that I've had sexual abstinence for, say, two, three or four days. That allows the sperm concentration to build up. And we know that concentration is essential for conception. Lots of recipients have got pregnant just with that one insemination. I would love for Janine to get pregnant. She'll make such a good mum. And I think the molar pregnancy was really, really hard on her. Hello. Oh, hi. Well, welcome to Aberdeen. <laughs> hi. Yeah, good, thanks. Good. That's that little girl. Uh, and that's another little girl. There's been all girls recently. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> Time-wise, we could 
go for it now. Yeah. I'll just knock on your door in like 20 minutes. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Okay, I'll see you in like 20 see minutes or yeah. something. Yeah, cool. Okay. See you soon. The moment you're going to produce the sample, you're just doing what you've been practicing your whole life for. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think sexy thoughts. I'm trying totally blank that there's people waiting in the next room. I've had relationships that have failed, and I think in my heart and in my head, I have to start my dreams with or without a partner in it. I come from a single parent background. I've seen firsthand that it can be done. Abstinence is important. Lots of partners aren't really understanding at all. And sometimes I've been with women who felt that it kind of took away their enjoyment because I wasn't able to ejaculate before I donate. Good luck. Nice, get it. That's my bit done. Now it's just a case of waiting to see what happens. My sex life is second priority to getting people pregnant. Why would you put like a few seconds of pleasure over someone's chance of having a, their family, you know. In the world of online donation, a pot of sperm from a well-intentioned stranger isn't the only way. There is a variety of methods, each with its own special terminology. There's artificial insemination, which is the classic semen in a pot and then there's NI, which is the way we were all conceived, which is natural sex. There are variations of this, including PI, which effectively is, is penetrative sex at the last minute. And then there is another bizarre one, AI+, plus, which apparently is what the pervy donors ask for. You know, it's a hand job, if you like. I'm a professional who works in the City of London. As of Today, I have conceived over 30 donor children. I started out as an AI donor for the first four people I helped, and it was the fifth. She asked me if I'd ever done it another way, inverted commas. I have helped seven women via NI. Four of them have been single, and three of them were in relationships. Two of them lied to me and told me at the time that the husband knew. The other two, the husband was fine with it and, and just wanted her to, to get pregnant. I've, I've never met the husbands, no. I think that would be a bit awkward. <laughs> the online donor world is most definitely a highly flawed environment. There are individuals who are purely doing this for sex. I've been on this site literally 15 minutes. Then the first offer of sex has just arrived. When Claire McCoy began looking for a sperm donor online, she was horrified by what she found. Once she'd had her child, she began conducting her own research. Often posing online as a woman looking for sperm. Even though I was acting as an AI recipient, I was constantly messaged by men wanting sex. PI made its arrival a few years ago. Men market this method for those women who were very uncomfortable with sex. But it'd be highly, highly manipulative and abusive to describe PI as a clinical act. 
women do go along with this simply because they want a baby. I've heard Dawn say that if nature intended women to become pregnant through AI, then men would have been given syringes rather than dicks. Sperm is like a prize. There are far more women wanting sperm than men offering. Men hold the power simply because they hold the sperm. These donors that are NI, I mean, they've got excuses like, well, nature intended. They're wicked people. They want to go on the dating site or some other perv site, if that's what they're looking for. If a donor's motivation is to get laid, then he's not a donor. Could you imagine someone who's just donated blood and then they ask the nurse, oh, can I get a blowjob? Drawing my search for a good donor. I encountered people trying to force me into things that I wasn't comfortable with, full while well knowing that I was in a same-sex relationship. I'm all of a tears. Right. If you see two lines, you are pregnant. It doesn't matter how faint or dark the lines are. I think that's a positive. Yeah, I can see a line. Yeah, there's a faint line. <laughs> you cheeky! Are you going to play before his sister? Are you going to play before his sister? Yeah. I will send that to Mark. Mark met me at his own expense. He's never once asked for a single penny off me. He's my guardian angel, he really is. I'm hoping he can see it as well, so it's not just me. The first time pregnancy is always great news. I think Mark has to look at me and I'm pregnant. <laughs> it sort of reassures me that despite getting on in years, my sperm is still excellent. The feeling I get when I see a photograph of the actual pregnancy test is great, job done, must move on very quickly now to the next lady. This one's got a P next to it. This is what I'm looking for. What in this business we call the big fat pregnancy. Clive keeps a detailed record of every donation and every pregnancy. This was a very nice period, the best period ever. You can see why from all the number of P's on there. I'm putting dots of where babies have been born. Liverpool. Oh, I was just outside Liverpool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, rugby, yeah. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Stoke, that's been a good area. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Stoke. 30. I think it is concerning if donors have conceived a very significant number of children. Derby. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. These children may want to have information about their donor, um, and if the donor is trying to manage approaches from, you know, dozens and dozens of people, then you would worry that the, the child might not get a positive reception. Oh, Stoke again. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. As well as obviously the risk of donor-conceived people kind of bumping into each other and, and forming relationships and the distress that it would cause if they then subsequently found out that they were genetically related to each other. So that's 45 that are born and uh, there are 16 on their way, which gets a total of 61. Looking at this, I'm quite pleased to see the way they're spread because, you know, if I'm to be a responsible donor, I've got to see that they're well spread out so that uh, none of them meet each other and, you know, and perhaps they produce a baby of their own because of all the genetic monsters they'll produce. <sighs> Clive also has three children by his wife and is a grandfather of nine. The biggest concern about being a sperm donor was my family. I didn't tell my wife initially. Um, 
you know, what, what is the best thing to do? Just saying I'm running late, because this one has actually been let down a few times by other donors. I'm a very busy man. I'm here, there and everywhere. So I told the wife that I joined the BMP, a secret organisation, uh, which required secret meetings. You've changed your outfit. Yeah, yes, I've. I've just changed my clothes because obviously I, I, I want to look smart, look my best. My wife eventually discovered I was a donor. I left my laptop lying around and since she found out she just told me she wished she hadn't found out it's making her unhappy however it's making a lot of people very happy my children do know about it but all they know is that i'm a sperm donor i don't talk to them about it obviously so I just step inside i've just got this thing like i know the neighbors are all thing i just saw him handed over some drugs I thought my age would be a big issue, but no. One mother, she's only just made it to 19. I mean, it's not a problem biologically, but, uh, you know, crikey. It's, it's, it's some thinking, isn't it? I mean, there are some issues as to why I might not be doing this, but, oh, it is just so right. The joy that it brings, I mean, to me, it's just magic. Lately, however, Clive's magic has been failing. Clive, when was the last confirmed pregnancy? The last pregnancy was last month now, which would be getting on for four weeks ago, which is you know, quite some time. I, I always fret <laughs> when there's been a few weeks since the last one. Uh, it's horrible, you know, when you're doing all these donations and nothing is happening. So, uh, yeah, I really could just do with another one. I just get periods of self-doubt as to whether I'm fertile or not. But uh, to be fair to me, I do donate to many uh, ladies that have got fertility problems. Some recipients get caught on one donation. Some recipients take much longer. The longest has been 12 donations. I do donate to pregnancy. That to me is a commitment. However, other donors have told me, three donations, that's your lot. You're a dud. It doesn't do their tally any good. Now, I don't want to demean this entire exercise, but the sense of achievement aspect as a donor is a hard one to quantify. It's that classic male focus on a number. Therefore, increasing a number is almost like scoring another goal. Procreation is a natural instinct. I think if I was a three-foot dwarf with only one eye, I'd still want to spread my genetic material as far and as wide as possible. The vast spread across the country of my babies, it just leaves me amazed. It can't compare with any job I've ever done or any sporting achievement I might have managed. I can't understand why every man on the planet doesn't want to be doing this. It's now two weeks since Janine inseminated herself with Mitch's sperm. Time for a pregnancy test. So I can see something, but I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me. I think it's one of them things, you know. I'm not 100%. Does it matter that it's strong or faint? I wouldn't say the best thing to do is to find it with the torch, but if it's there, it's there. But I'd rather it be a negative for many, many times than, than a, a molar again, I think. I don't, want, I don't want to do that again. Janine will have to wait until her first ultrasound scan in three weeks to find out if the pregnancy is normal and healthy.
Have you had any pregnancy news yet? No, no pregnancy news, no pregnancies I have heard of and I'm um, still waiting so hopefully one will uh, come soon because it's been some time now. I've got all the planners going way back to from when I started in 2013. I'm just looking through them just to see, well, what are the lean periods there were, what other peri periods there were in the past where I, I got very few pregnancies. I mean, I'm looking at one now and I mean, can I see a pee for pregnancy anywhere? There's been one pregnancy in the last 51 days, I counted up this morning. I mean, what is my success rate? It's very, very dismal. I'm getting one pregnancy to every 12 donations. And that to me seems very poor. I've, I spoke to all the donors, you know, is this normal? But of course they won't tell me. You know, they're like politicians, they don't give you a straight answer. I was busy a bit earlier and probably it, it generates a bit of a sweat. Um, let me just uh, open the window a bit. Before handing over his next donation, Clive takes a closer look. I'm just see if I can try and catch the beggars out. I mean, are, are they really there? Oh, right, yeah, OK, there they are. Oh, crikey, absolutely billions of them. It's just like, you know, a pile of snakes, billions of snakes all slithering around here. I mean, looking here, I, I can't see what the problem is. Uh, certainly not me. Sometimes I do tell people that I'm a sperm donor and their reaction is the same every time. Shot, uh, and they've already decided what it's all about and, and they've decided it's all bad. I mean, I've had someone say, well, they've no father then. These are where I've donated to uh, same-sex couples. Well, no, no, there won't be a male, but um, hey, they get two mums. I mean, <laughs> how good is that? Two mums. Unfortunately, most of my memories of my father is criticism. His favourite comment was, well, that was a bit stupid now. The reason I like to be in a sperm donor is that I know I'm doing good. I mean, how many other people around here you know, get, get, get messages every couple of weeks saying, Clive, oh, you're giving us the greatest gift that anybody could give us. We had one where, uh, oh, your wife must be so proud of you. How did it go? Yeah, it went well. Yeah, they found a heartbeat, so it's, it's viable. Oh, awesome. Um, okay. It's not the molar that it was before. Did you get to see anything on the scan? It just looked like a blob, to be honest. It's measured at 7.7 .7 millimetres, so it's a blueberry. <laughs> Are you sure that that one little sack couldn't turn into three little sacks? No. Because I definitely no. had you down for triplets, yeah. <laughs> you did not. Now this is a positive pregnancy test. This came through this morning. The message was, am I seeing things? And clearly she's not seeing things. All this racing around doing all these donations, this is what it's for, this is what it's all about. What is quite nice about this one is it's one of Mark's. Mark asked me if I'd take this, um, this recipient on because she was too far away. I, I mean, th this is, get my own back because he's, he's, he's done this to me twice. You know, the little rotter. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Things are good. They are here. Yeah. He'll appreciate that. Yeah, I can think I can fit it in there. So there it is, another pea. I'm feeling a lot better. What number P is that? Oh, this would be the 62nd. The magic's still there, it's still happening. Are you able to bring a donation on the 8th of April? Well, it's now the 20th of April, so I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Too late. Oh, right. I meant the 8th of May, but we'll leave it until we've got married, which is July. Okay, that's the best way of doing it. 
because there's no chance in the future of um, them coming back for money. This is where the law gets incredibly complicated. If the recipient is a single woman or if she's in a relationship but she and her partner are not married at the time of conception, then the donor will be the legal father. Now, the recipients may have agreed not to pursue him financially, but if they change their mind, then he is on the hook. It also means that the child has a right of inheritance from him. And from the parent's perspective, it means that the donor has, you know, slightly more rights than he would otherwise have if he wishes to seek greater involvement in the child's life than they feel comfortable with. I'm hoping she comes out a girl, as promised, but if not, he is wearing pink. A lot. <laughs> I'm not concerned about the legal implications of my donating. I spent a lot of time getting to know Janine. I'd say I'm a pretty good judge of character and I'd really trust that she would never try to kind of like do me over essentially. I can categorically say that. I'll never be applying for custody of any of these children. That's part of the promise that I give to these recipients. The disputed cases are so emotional. And I have to say, of all the cases we've had where we've represented lesbian couples and single women in these situations, I don't think I've had a single one where at some point in the proceedings they've not said to me, oh, we wish we'd just gone to a licensed clinic and conceived with a sperm donor we didn't know, because he's never going to be the legal father of your child. Another advantage of going to a clinic is that a child has a legal right to contact their donor at the age of 18. With online donation, the mother can choose to withhold the donor's identity forever. The worst part of being the sperm donor is the mothers that dump you as soon as they became pregnant. There's a term called sperm jacking. Their email address changes, they cancel their mobile phone number and you get nothing. Total silence. This is Riley. Although as big as I am, there is definitely only one in there. You're looking forward to having a brother? Mm. I've sent Mark copies of the scan pictures. I've sent him every appointment date. Just keep him updated and he's really appreciative of that. Strangely enough, I don't get anything paternal. I always feel that the baby is 100% the mother's. But I like to follow them right up to birth and throughout their childhood into adult life. I get messages from the mothers about how much I've changed their lives. It gives me a tremendous buzz and just makes me want to carry on doing it. Do you think of them as your children? Uh, I don't think of these children as my children at all, no, no. I know some people would say that I've got 40 kids, but I haven't got 40 kids at all. I mean, all I did was I, I, I turned up somewhere, handed over some, uh, some bodily, bodily fluid, and that's me out of it. And I believe that a person is, is, is formed through their upbringing. I see myself as a family friend. I mean, what do friends do? They help each other, and that's, that's what I did. I helped this family in a big way. All right, release. For me, life's at its best at the moment. I say to myself, yeah, enjoy this time, Clive, because it's not going to last. I do think about stopping, and my preoccupation is, is how many is too many? If I was to stop now, then all that joy that I would have created is going to stop, so what is the number? Donating it's now a way of life. I'll probably help to create another 10 families and that would take it up to about 30. If the number was too high, it could make you feel like you're part of a herd, but then it, it is hard to turn away people. I really want to be the one that gives them their dreams. In terms of me finding my soulmate, 
it's definitely a hindrance. A girl I was seeing, she did not like the idea of other women being pregnant by me. But there's no way that I would abandon the donor conceived children or my donating in general for a partner. This is who I am. They have to take me as a package. I sometimes wake up in the morning and think it was just all a dream, but it's actually happening. There's 60 plus babies in this world because of my actions and I feel very, very proud of myself. If any of the children want to meet me in later life, I am available, but they must be aware that I've got a family of my own and never the twain shall meet. My children would be severely affected by the news that they've got something like 60 plus half brothers and sisters. So for that reason, I'm determined to keep it as something that I'll take to the grave with me.